Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news at 6 on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. Union Cabinet removes restrictions on the export of pulses. It also approves setting up of the National Anti-Profiteering Authority under the Goods and Services Tax. As the air quality in Delhi and the national capital region improves, the Supreme Court mandated pollution control body withdraws the ban on construction activities and allows entry of trucks into the capital. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi greet the media fraternity on National Press Day. Both leaders uphold the freedom of press and expression. A key U.S. Congressional Committee has proposed to increase the minimum salary of H-1B visa holders from $60,000 to $90,000 per annum. Well, the Cabinet on Thursday approved setting up of the National Anti-Profiteering Authority under the Goods and Services Tax, a move that will ensure that businesses pass on the benefit of the recent tax rate cuts to the consumers. In another big move, the Union Cabinet has decided to remove all restrictions on the export of pulses. With this move, farmers will now be able to sell their produce at the fair market in the open market. The Cabinet approval came at a meeting chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Minister of, uh, for Electronic, IT and Law and Justice, Ravi Shankar Prasad. All the prohibitions on the export of pulses have been removed. And there is a very strong reason for it because the Prime Minister has appealed and all of us had appealed requesting the farmers to increase their pulse productions. Ajo Munafa Virodhi Authority ka ki sthapna ki gayi cabinet ki dhirne ke dwara ye bharat ke छोटे छोटे बड़े कंज्यूमर्स के पक्ष में भारत सरकार खड़ी है और इसका प्रावधान यह है कि एक स्टेट लेवल पर स्क्रीनिंग कमेटी मिलेगी जो राज्य के गुड्स जो है वो और अगर कोई ऐसा गुड्स है जिसका नेशनल रेमिफिकेशन है उसके लिए नेशनल लेवल पर स्टैंडिंग कमेटी बनेगी और कोई भी कंज्यूमर अगर उसको शिकायत तो उसकी देनदारी है वो उसको नहीं दी जा रही है और मुनाफाखोरी हो रही है वो शिकायत कर सकता है और उसके बाद ये मैटर एंटी प्रॉफिटिंग अथॉरिटी के सामने आएगा और उचित कार्रवाई की जाएगी और निर्देश दिया जाएगा Well, on Thursday, the Supreme Court mandated Environment Pollution Authority to withdraw the ban on construction activities, entry of trucks and enhanced parking fees from across Delhi NCR as the air quality improved. The air quality remained out of the emergency category for the second straight day. The measures, part of the graded response action plan, were enforced on November 8th after pollution levels had increased, hitting the emergency category, accompanied by thick smog. But enforcement on the uh, closure of a Badarpur thermal power plant ban on brick kilns and hot mix plants and stone crushers will continue to stay for a few more days. Meanwhile, NGT has directed Delhi government to submit data on ambient air quality of the last two days. The Green Court said that it will reconsider its order of banning industrial activities in Delhi soon after. जब तक भारत सरकार और सारे राज्यों की सरकारें इसमें मिलकर नहीं करेंगी आप किसी एक राज्य के मुख्यमंत्री से हजार बार भी सवाल पूछेंगे तो उसके पास समाधान निकलेगा नहीं लेकिन कम से कम उत्तर भारत में समस्या है तो उत्तर भारत के सारे राज्यों के मुख्यमंत्री केंद्र सरकार को पहल करनी चाहिए सबके साथ बैठ के क्योंकि बात हवा एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव बाउंड्रीज में नहीं बसी हुई है ये समझना पड़ेगा Spiritual leader Sri Sri Ravi Shankar has arrived in Ayodhya offering to resolve the long-standing Ram Temple dispute. Beginning the mediation, Sri Sri met with Mahant Nitya Gopal Das, the chairman of the Ram Janmabhumi Nyas. After the meeting, the spiritual leader said that it's an old dispute and will take some time to resolve. Spiritual leader Sri Sri Ravi Shankar arrived in Ayodhya to work out a settlement to the Ram Temple Babri Masjid issue. 
attempting to negotiate, he met with the chief of Ram Janma Bhumi Nyas, Mahant Nritya Gopal Das. Meeting other Mahants and religious leaders, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar said that the issue is an old one and will take time to resolve. मैं तो ये नहीं कह रहा हूँ मैं हल करने आया हूँ मेरे पास कोई फॉर्मूला है मैं दे रहा हूँ रेडी मेड मेरा यही अर्जी है सबसे अनुरोध है हमारे देश में इंसानियत की कमी नहीं है स्नेह का कमी नहीं है प्रेम का कमी नहीं है सब लोग एक स्नेहपूर्ण वातावरण में फिर बैठे और इस मुद्दे को एक मुद्दे का एक हल निकाल सकते हैं हम लोग However, several voices from both parties have opposed the mediation by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, saying none of the previous efforts for out-of-court settlement have been successful. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar ji ko chahiye Ram Lala ka darshan kare aur darshan karke santo se milna ho mile aur wapas chale jaye. Ye Vishnu Parishad ne ladai ladi hai, Ram Jamhi Nyas ne ladai ladi hai. Ham logon ne khun pasina bahaya hai. Ye proposal to maane ke liye Musalman ki ab Babri Masjid se wo apna haq khatam kar le, utha le. इसके अलावा कोई प्रपोजल हो तो पहले विश्व हिंदू परिषद से बात करिएगा अगर वो एग्रीड हो तो आप प्रपोजल लिख के हमारे वहाँ पर्सनल लॉ बोर्ड के चेयरमैन या जनरल सेक्रेटरी को भेजिएगा तो वो इसको देखेंगे अगर द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हैज सेड दैट श्री श्री रविशंकर स्पीस बिट इज इन हिज ओन कैपेसिटी एंड द गवर्नमेंट हैज नथिंग टू डू विद इट श्री श्री रविशंकर जी का विषय श्री श्री रविशंकर जी के पास रहने दीजिए कानून मंत्री रविशंकर के पास मत आइए ठीक है On Wednesday, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar had a 40-minute meeting with UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath in Lucknow to discuss the issue. The Supreme Court will hold the final hearing in the matter from the 5th of December. Earlier, the Allahabad High Court had ordered the disputed land to be divided into three parts, against which all parties had approached the Supreme Court. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has termed India's economic issues as a temporary blip seen during the recent structural changes. Addressing investors at the Morgan Stanley Annual Conference in Singapore on India's structural reforms and growth path ahead, Jaitley assured that India's economic issues have bottomed out and should now start moving upwards. Talking about the massive economic reforms undertaken by India, the Finance Minister claimed that three key structural reforms, Aadhaar, Demonetization and GST have enhanced transparency and helped in transition from cash to a less cash economy. Assuring investors of a strong banking sector in India, he said, and I quote, I think the bottoming out of the economy is complete and now it should start moving upwards. The global economy is also moving up. Our basic parameters are quite stable and we grew between 7 to 8 percent over the last three years. Therefore, we need over the next at least a decade, if not more, significantly higher growth uh, rates in order to go ahead with the expansion plan of the Indian economy. Well, Vice President M. Venkaya and I do address the National Press Day event organized by the Press Council of India on Thursday. Speaking on the occasion, the Vice President said journalism is a noble profession and all media persons must ensure that people are correctly informed. He heard, urged a present-day journalists to return to the core values of accuracy, fairness, objectivity, newsworthiness and independence. The Vice President also distributed the national awards for excellence in journalism for this year. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also greeted the media fraternity on the occasion of National Press Day. In a tweet, the Prime Minister said the free press is the cornerstone of a vibrant democracy and his government is fully committed to upholding its freedom. He expressed hope that the media space will be used more to showcase the skills, strengths and creativity of the 125 crore Indians. He also lauded the hard work of the media, especially the reporters and camera persons, who he said worked tirelessly to bring forth various news items that shape national as well as global discourse. Well, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu today met with Singapore's Minister for Trade and Industry S. Ishwaran. Uh, the meeting took place at the Vice President's house where a warm welcome was accorded to the visiting Singapore Minister. In the meeting, both leaders talked about bilateral relations between India and Singapore. Congratulations for the appointment. Good enough. Very, very tough and 
Vice President Venkaiah Naidu also met with Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan today. But President Ramnath Kovind is in Punjab today. After arriving at the Air Force Station at Adampur, he presented the President's standards to 223rd Squadron and the 117th Helicopter Unit of the Indian. Force. Speaking on the occasion, the President said that India's rise in the international system has many dimensions to it, adding that it draws heavily from the capabilities and bravery of our armed forces. He further added, though, that we remain firmly committed to peace, we are determined to use all our might to protect the sovereignty of our nation. The President said that every citizen of India sleeps securely because he or she knows that armed forces are there to protect them. This is his first visit to Punjab after taking over as President of India. Well, in other news now, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi targeted Prime Minister Narendra Modi over the Rafale fighter aircraft deal. He asked the media why it didn't question the Prime Minister on the issue. The Congress claims that the Rafale deal was uh, tailor-made to help Reliance Defence Limited, but uh, the company has called the allegations baseless and unfounded. Taking on the media on other issues, Rahul Gandhi also asked why no questions were posed to the Prime Minister on Amit Shah's son, Jay Shah. Gandhi was speaking after his meeting with workers of the All India Unorganized Workers Congress. The BJP rubbished the allegations, saying that the Congress's intention was to divert attention as the party's top leaders faced possible questioning in the Augusta Western VVIP chopper scam. ये आप मोदी जी से राफेल डील जो है इसके बारे में सवाल क्यों नहीं पूछ रहे हैं और ये जो अमित शाह जी के पुत्र हैं इनके बारे में आप सवाल क्यों नहीं पूछ रहे हैं ये क्या हो रहा है आप मुझसे जो पूछना चाहो मैं पूछते हो मैं खुशी से जवाब देता हूं मगर प्रधानमंत्री जी जिन्होंने राफेल डील में पूरी डील को बदल दिया एक बिजनेसमैन की मदद करने के लिए डील बदल दी उसके बारे में आप उनसे सवाल क्यों नहीं पूछ रहे हो मैं आपसे सवाल करना चाहता था वेल हियर्स अ राउंड अप नाउ ऑफ सम अदर न्यूज फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द कंट्री इन नेशन वाइड डॉक्टर्स ऑफ प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल्स इन बेंगलुरु आर ऑन एन इनडेफिनेट स्ट्राइक दे आर डिमांडिंग दैट एटलीस्ट फोर कंटेंशियस प्रपोजल्स इन द कर्नाटक प्राइवेट मेडिकल एस्टैब्लिशमेंट्स अमेंडमेंट बिल ऑफ 2017 शुड बी ड्रॉप्ड Among other things, the bill proposes six months to three years of jail term and hefty penalty for medical negligence. Chief Minister Siddaramaiya has said that he will call representatives of protesting doctors to discuss their issues. The Sri Lankan Navy today arrested 10 fishermen along with their boat on charges of entering into Sri Lankan waters. The fishermen have been handed over to Fisheries Department in Jaffna for further legal action. As per reports with the latest arrest, the total number of Indian fishermen in Sri Lankan custody has gone up to 99. The Supreme Court today asked the CBI to file its reply on the plea filed by Karthi Chidambaram seeking to travel abroad in connection with the INX media case. The CBI had sought more time to reply to the plea. The matter has been adjourned till Monday. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shah, and you're watching Law of the Land. A lot of Australians are working, even Indian sports nowadays. So even the different teams are also having a lot of Australian support staff. The sports is not something which uh, you perform in the spur of the moment. We are going to start the uh, National Sports University uh, from this year itself. The government of India should consider. inviting foreigners or people who are excellent in sports watch law of the land on rajiv sabha television
one of the most influential revolutionaries of Indian freedom struggle, Shaheed Bhagat Singh. Born into a Sikh family, patriotism flowed in his blood at the age of 13. When he formed Naujawan Bharat Sabha to spread the message of revolution in Punjab. In the wake of avenging Lala Lajpat Rai's death, Bhagat Singh and his associates coined the catchphrase Inkalab Zindabad. But towards the end of their rebellion, they had to pay a heavy price for their patriotism. Following the blasts inside the corridors of the assembly, both Bhagat Singh and Batukesh Vardak caught an arrest. Bhagat Singh was sent to the gallows in Lahore with his fellow comrades, after which he was cremated in Hussainiwala on the banks of Satluj. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, let's now get you some news from Zimbabwe, where the citizens weigh an uncertain future after the army took control of all government institutions on Wednesday. President Robert Mugabe continues to be under house arrest. News reports suggest Mugabe has been urged to step down peacefully, helping in a smooth transition of power. Here's more. A day after the military seized power, Zimbabwe remained in a political limbo. The streets of capital city Harare remained calm as heavily armed soldiers patrolled the streets. A series of meetings between political parties and the army took place through the day and efforts to form a transitional government were said to be underway. The South African Development Community Regional Bloc sent envoys to Harare to help put an end to the political turmoil in Zimbabwe. There was no fresh report on President Robert Mugabe, who was placed under house arrest after the army took over. The whereabouts of his wife Grace, who was bidding to succeed him as president, remained unknown. Local media reports said a number of senior members of the ruling party, as well as those supportive of the First Lady, were detained. Zimbabweans reacted cautiously to the developments, awaiting the next steps of the military. The intervention by the Zimbabwe army is very good because you are looking forward for a new Zimbabwe, a better Zimbabwe. People woke up, went to work and uh, it's business as usual and uh, no one is harassing anyone. We are just up and about doing what we normally do and we are quite okay. I mean, we are a bit uh, uncertain about what's going to happen but we are still very much fine. A joint statement by more than 100 civil society groups also urged Mugabe to peacefully step aside and help restore order in the country. A Catholic priest close to the Mugabe family was also reported to be involved with negotiations between the president and the military. Amid the political upheaval, countries urged their citizens to remain safe and limit unnecessary movements. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj said she was in constant touch with the Indian Embassy in Zimbabwe and assured that all Indians there were safe. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, at least nine people were killed and many others injured in a suicide bomb blast in the Afghan capital, Kabul. The blast took place near a gathering of supporters of regional leader Atta Muhammad Noor, the governor of the northern province of Balkh and a leader of the Tajik Jamiyat-e-Islami party. A spokesman for the Interior Ministry said that the suicide bomber approached a hotel hosting the gathering in the Kher Khana district of Kabul on foot. The bomber tried to get into the building but was stopped at the security checkpoint where he detonated his device. The explosion was the latest in a wave of violence in Afghanistan that has killed and wounded thousands of civilians this year. Well, US President Donald Trump touted the success of his recent Asia trip. He highlighted uh, calls for China to implement fair and equitable trade practices with the United States. Speaking to media persons, Trump said that the days of the United States being taken advantage of are over. Trump returned to the U.S. after a hectic 12-day trip to Japan, South Korea, China, Vietnam and the Philippines. Trump also called for joint efforts to tighten the screws on North Korea and its development of nuclear weapons in defiance of the U.N. sanctions. President Xi recognizes that a nuclear North Korea is a grave threat to China, and we agree that we would not accept a so-called freeze-for-freeze freeze agreement like those that have consistently failed in the past. We made that time is running out, 
and we made it clear. And all options remain on the table. Well, here's a roundup now of some other news from around the world in Global Buzz. A 21-year-old Indian student was shot dead by four armed robbers at a grocery store in California. Dharampreet Singh Jassar was uh, on duty at a grocery store when four armed robbers barged in to loot the store. Jassar hid behind uh, the cash counter but was shot by one of the robbers. Jassar was an accounting student from Punjab. The police has arrested an Indian-origin man who is believed to be one of the suspects. The UK government has announced that it will double the number of visas given to professionals from outside Europe in the field of technology, art and creative industries. The announcement was made by Prime Minister Theresa May as part of her post-Brexit strategy to present Britain as open to global talent. The number of visas available through the Tier 1 exceptional talent route will increase from the current 1,000 to 2,000 a year. A key congressional committee voted to pass a legislation which uh, proposes to increase the minimum salary of H-1B visa holders from $60,000 to $90,000. The legislation also imposes a number of other restrictions on the work visa popular among IT professionals from India. The bill will now head to the full house for approval. A blast in a hotel in the Argentine capital, Buenos Aires, injured at least eight people. Seven of the eight injured were hotel staff. Rescue workers and firefighters were seen evacuating people and putting out the fire. Firefighters speculate that a gas leakage from the laundry room of the hotel may have caused the blast. Well, moving on to some sports news now. The first test match between India and Sri Lanka at Kolkata's Eden Gardens was stopped due to bad lights. After winning the toss, the Lankans elected to bowl first. Sri Lankan pacer Suranga Lakmal took three wickets, including that of skipper Virat Kohli. India ended the day at 17 for three as rain played spoil sport. Lakmal claimed Lokesh Rahul with the first ball of the match and bowled six overs without conceding any runs. After the rain washed out uh, the first session, India batted for only 11.5 overs before bad light ended the day. Cheteshwar Pujara was on 8 and Ajinkya Rahane was yet to open his account. Well, here's a roundup now of some of the other sports news in Sports Beat. Ace Indian Shuttler and newly crowned national champion Saina Nehwal and HS Pradoy lost their respective games in the second round matches of the China Open Super Series premiere. Saina lost uh, to fifth seeded Akane Yamaguchi of Japan in the second round of the women's singles 18 21 11 21. In the men's singles event, Pranoy lost to his Hong Kong opponent Yu Li 19 21 17 21. Well, the president of the World Anti-Doping Agency said that Russia will remain non-compliant with its code, dealing a major blow to the country's hopes of being cleared to compete at February's Winter Olympics. Russia's anti-doping agency has been suspended since a WADA report in 2015 found evidence of state-sponsored doping and accused it of systematically violating anti-doping regulations. WADA set out a roadmap for Russia to regain its status, but a meeting of its foundation board in Seoul decided that key criteria had not been met. Austria's Dominic Thiem defeated Spain's Pablo Carreno Busta 6-3-3-6-6-4 with the win. Fourth-seeded Thiem kept his hopes alive of making it through to the group with his uh, final match against Belgium's David Goffin. The match will decide the second qualifier from the group after Grigor Dimitrov secured his place in the final four. And before we call it a wrap on this edition of the Bulletin, an interesting story from the world of arts. A 500-year-old painting of Jesus Christ believed to have been 
painted by Leonardo da Vinci has uh, been sold in New York for a record $450 million. The painting is known as uh, Salvatore Mundi, which uh, means savior of the world. It is the highest auction price for any work of art. It depicts Christ in a vivid blue and crimson robe and holding a crystal orb. According to uh, Christie's, it is one of the less than 20 Da Vinci paintings still in existence. And we'll leave you with these visuals. We move to the Leonardo da Vinci. At 120 knots.